Well, I tell you what, I've not been in this airsoft game for years for nothing. Um, oh, would you look at that? Oh, I thought, I thought for a second something broke. No, these are your accessories. But oh, did you see that? Just imagine you're in the middle of an airsoft game. You're walking around, walking around, pretending that you're carrying your pet lunch or some batteries or some extra BBs or whatever. Then all of a sudden, contact! Come on! <laughs> this is another airsoft mic production. Ooh, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's been a minute. Oh my gosh. Do you know how long I've been waiting for one of these bad boys? Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, you know, a new company comes along in the airsoft world. I love it when a new company comes along. Anyway, they've done their own version. It's called the FMG9 and the company is called Aegis. And I've got one. They're not cheap, but I've got one. Huge shout out to iHole Sales. They sent me this bad boy to have a play with and keep nice. Now, my only problem is, I don't think I've got any Airsoft Glocks. Bruh. Ah, oh, go on then, I've got one or two. And trust me, that ain't the whole lot. To be fair, looking at this, there's really only one choice for me. I mean, obviously I can't use this. I don't know why this is on the table, but anyway. The official or the unofficial? I'm gonna do the unofficial because the unofficial is seriously upgraded. So, let's go people. So, as if you didn't know already, that's a G18. Some people like to say a G17 with a selector switch or a fun switch, but it's all about this baby right here. Let's get it open. Loving the packaging. Literally nothing on there other than FMG9, which has a nice sort of shiny effect like an embossing Aegis custom opens up like that very deluxe absolutely loving this look at the packaging gorgeous come on oh would you look at that baby oh come on no messing about I've waited so long for one of these <laughs> oh gosh this is one of those uh, holy grails I've always wanted in airsoft it may not be the original with the all, you know, the licensed stuff and Magpul and all that hullabaloo, but come on, look how small and compact this is. And what I like about this even more, you can actually slip the handle off. So literally it's only a bit bigger than one of those VHS tapes. Ah, you probably still don't know what I'm talking about. VHS tapes, you're probably way far younger than me. But anyway, um, look, something a bit more relevant and up to date. Look, my Samsung Galaxy, look, one of them iPhone Pro Max 14. Have I got a spare book? I need a book. Uh, you know, a typical size hard back book. Um, got a spare book anyway. Ah, I just found a spare book. Look, Bruh. not exactly. <laughs> look at that. In fact, one of these books, is way bigger no matter which way round you put it now all i have to do is get that in there but my only so far criticism of this whole thing is where's the manual i've looked everywhere i've even pulled this out i tell you what this is some quality piece of a firm foam no manual i mean come on well i tell you what I've not been in this airsoft game for years for nothing. Um, oh, would you look at that? Oh, I thought, I thought for a second something broke. No, these are your accessories. But oh, did you see that? Oh, I've got to do that again. That was so exciting. You can just imagine you're in the middle of an airsoft game. You're walking around, walking around, pretending that you're carrying your pet lunch or some batteries or some extra BBs or whatever. Then all of a sudden, contact! Come on! And there's not even anything in it yet. So let me just get to that now. <laughs> so initially, as you can see, when you take it out of the box, this is what you're getting. You've seen how it opens basically right here where you would rack the slide. That's how you get it to open up. Now, how this basically works is when it does open up, I'll do this in sort of like a, a slow time uh, uh, effect for you. As you can see there, you've got your grip. Inside the grip will go your airsoft mag, okay? Even when the long airsoft mag, the extended one is in there, it will still fold up. I will show you that later. 
But initially, I'm just gonna put a short one in there, okay? But you can imagine it's in. Actually, let's not imagine. Hey, look, for the purpose of this demonstration, I've actually got one of the official ones from Umarex. So, um, if I slot that in, okay? Now, remember when I showed you uh, a little baggie of accessories? Uh, here we go, you don't need to remember. Here it is, right there. That little baggie actually has smaller base plates because this is going to be a bit of a tight squeeze when you're folding it up again. So there's one literally here. It says it in there as well. Can you see there? It literally has M and W. Now, in the absence of a good instruction manual, <laughs> I'm guessing that's Marui and WeTech or W-E, okay? So that will fit on the basis of those. And we all know that WeTech is basically a ripoff, sorry, a clone of Marui stuff. So yeah, that will work for both. And then this one has V which is basically for your VFC Umarex blocks. Now, as I was saying before, you can see how the short magazine will fit in there very nicely. But then if you try to introduce the stock into the equation, look, bring it in and you can see there, look, it is just too wide for it to close. Now you can actually flex this a little bit and close it in, close it in. <laughs> Come on, I could do this all day. Now, unlike me, if you've only got a long one. Nice. Not to worry, as I said before, as long as this extended mag is, you can still fit it in. All you have to do is manually, look, I don't know if you can just see that, there's a button there. Just push that bad boy in and you can manually fold this up. But the only drawback of that for me is it takes away the whole slickness of it all when folding it up. But just going to show you for demonstration purposes. Fold that up. You've got to hold it in because it will spring back out if you don't. So you just hold that in. And then on the back of the grip, there's another sort of long button. You just press that in. And look, you can bring your mag up to there and all you have to do because you've got plenty of room there look to push the mag forward and then look making sure your fingers are out of the way look it folds in nicely come on would you look at that nice and just in case you think i'm holding on to it for dear life because it isn't actually closed wrong decent <laughs> Now at this point, you no longer need the lower frame. You literally only have to install this. Oh, but wait, I say you no longer need the lower frame. Well, you need the contents. Well, some of it anyway. Um, I just got to whip out the hammer assembly and that there and yeah. And on the slide, because this uh, selector switch is a little bit too big, to fit neatly inside the FMG9. As I showed you earlier, they actually supply you a more shallow, flatter version. So yeah, I'm gonna have to whip that off, put that on. And I also believe, because once again, there's no instruction manual and I looked all over YouTube, couldn't find a single decent um, installation video that was in English. There's one or two, I think that are in either Chinese or Japanese. So I put the auto translate on. But I tried to see if anyone else did it, but most people just did an unboxing. So, um, yeah, I believe I've got to whip this rear sight off and put this more, again, flatter, shallow version on there instead. And I think you can get away with leaving the front sight on, but I think that has to come off too. But anyway, we'll see. So I'm just in the process of removing that screw right here on the old hammer assembly. Now it's quite important, apparently, <laughs> when you do whip this bad boy out, is to cup your hand around it. Because I think there's a spring that will go flying off. And just to put things into perspective, or oh, make sure you don't lose any of the screws, okay? <laughs> so let me just put that there so I know it's there. I've got a magnetic tray here somewhere. But anyway, um, on the top is the lower frame of the WeTech, an upgraded one, by the way. And down the bottom is the FMG9, okay? So basically, I need to replicate whatever you can see in the frame of the WeTech. The FMG9 has to basically look like that by the time I'm finished. So defo, I've got to take out the hammer assembly 
whip that in there and also this trigger bar right here because if you look down on the FMG9 you can see there's a spring ready and waiting to accept it see so there's the original on the Wii and there's the FMG9 ready to take on that trigger bar come on let's do it now this is not an instructional video but you might as well watch me as I do it <laughs> Now I've just got to quickly refer back to the FMG9 because, yeah, as I thought, look. So remember this is representing the lower frame and if you look here, you've got a little slot look and there's a matching one on the other side. So that means I've got to take out the little takedown tabs off the actual Airsoft piece and pop them in there. Now remember, because Aegis didn't bother to put any instruction manuals in there, why I order? Um, you literally just have to look at your piece. Nice and look at the FMG9 and work out what needs to come out of there and what needs to go in there. Right, so I'm just gonna, right, I've already started this. Literally, all I did, let me just put it down here, is use a flathead screwdriver and just get it in on the side and just prise it out. You don't need to unscrew anything or use a punch. Now, because I have never taken this particular piece down before, um, so everything is pretty much brand new in here. <laughs> everything is stiff. Stop it, get some help. Put that there for now. Now all I have to do this way up is slide that in there. Now it's probably gonna be a bit fiddly. Remember, this is not a tutorial. You're just watching me do it. <laughs> right, so we take down tabs or levers as it were. It's gotta sit on top of that silvery grey thing there. See that right there? <laughs> Don't ask me the technical words because remember when you're using those tabs we're all used to holding those tabs and pulling them down yeah and they're, they're on some sort of a really tight springy tension board thing. So yeah logic tells me that's exactly what that is right there. So it's got to sit on top of that. This is not a tutorial you're just watching me do it. <laughs> So now I've explained how that goes in, you don't need to watch this bit. Now, <laughs> what I managed to do off camera is I dropped the whole hammer assembly in. I managed to put the screw back in, even though it's a very awkward position to get that screw back in, but it's in. And if you look here, I don't know if you can just see it, the pin. As you can see there, it looks slightly too long, but I think there's enough room so nothing catches. Right now, because this slide is gonna go in there too, we gotta to get rid of a couple of things. So the first thing is the stock front sight and the selector. And of course, the rear sight. So I loosened the screw and the rear sight plopped off. Nice. <laughs> right, so here's the more flusher designed selector switch. And as you can see here, it also has the replicated little hole that you've got to put the spring and that little tiny nub in. So I'll just do that now. Oh my gosh, that took me forever. Just as well, I did it off camera. And yes, the little nub thing and spring flicked out mid-air. Luckily, I kept my eyes on it like an eagle and I saw where it landed, so I was able to retrieve it. But anyway, you can see how flush the new selector switch is, which is exactly what you need to go in the FMG9. Right, so I'm just gonna put all this back together again. Nice. Okay. The part we've all been waiting for. So, what I'm gonna do by pressing that little tab there, that allows me to open up the top 
ready for the slide. However, just to make things a little easier, it's quite easy to just remove this whole top section. Although this is quite robust and tough, it's got some flexibility so that I can literally do that easily. And now I should be able to just line up the slide here. <laughs> okay, a couple of things I want to mention to you before I wrap up part one of this video. Zoom in. As if you haven't noticed already, there's a generous rail on top. Of course, most of it is taken up by this cool handle. Right there, you can put a little flashlight, okay? But it's gonna be a fairly small one. Look, I can literally just hold it in my hand like that, and without shaking it or anything like that, just pull back on this. Come on! Would you look at that? Lovely. <laughs> I absolutely love this. Now, one final important note. If anyone tells you you can put any airsoft Glock in this. Hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. It's not true. Technically, you could probably squeeze any airsoft Glock in there, but whether it would work flawlessly or not is a different thing. So part two of this video, not only am I gonna show you this in action, okay? You've actually seen the airsoft lock inside in action before, so I'm not proving anything by showing it to you. But it is quite cool that this charging handle is what's gonna rack the slide back. Guess what happens when you do use this bad boy? This bad boy goes back and forward, back and forward, back and Brilliant! Now you're probably wondering, why can't I just test it right now? Because I wanna make a part two where I test various ones all in one video, including the humble little Springer version, which will also work in this bad boy. Ha! Bye.